Hi, my name is Caitlin Riley, and my topic is reintegrative shaming. John Braithwaite is a professor at the Australian National University, and he is the one that came up with reintegrative shaming. Um, he first started by studying white collar crime in the pharmaceutical industry, and then he switched and wrote a book called Crime, Shame, and Reintegration in 1989. Um, and his book came up with the theories of both disintegrative shaming and reintegrative shaming. Reintegrative shaming provides the social process mechanisms to bring those censored back into the community, reaffirming that they are morally good. It is a very pragmatic type of stigmatization. It is forgiving. Um, it focuses on the actions of a person rather than their identity. We do not want to shame someone about who they are. We just want to get across that the actions that they did were not okay. It is frequently used with juveniles and in schools. Braithware thought that this explains why other societies, like Japan, have lower crime rates, while those that do not use this, like the U.S., have higher crime rates. Humiliation equals higher crime. Braithwaite's book produced two different types of shaming, disintegrative and reintegrative. Reintegrative is the most positive, uh, stigma-less type of shaming that there could be. It, if there's any stigma at all put on the offender, then it is very forgivable by society as a whole. Society will often help support the offender and help them get back to how life was before. Disintegrative, on the other hand, completely cuts off the offender from mainstream society, lets them go back to doing whatever criminal behavior they were doing beforehand, and the stigma is very unforgiving. It is one that you cannot shake, and it often ends up affecting your life for the rest of your life. <laughs> you won't be able to get jobs, you won't be able to get loans, you might not even be able to vote depending on what happens. Reintegrative shaming can be used in a variety of situations, ranging from a child's bad behavior to a misdemeanor. Um, it is normally used when regarding to children because it is an easy and effective way for them to learn that their actions do have consequences. Even if they don't know about them, it still affects someone down the line. Um, an example would be that a child gets caught stealing from a store. It happens more often than you think, but the parent would make the child go back and not only return the item that they took, they have to apologize and have a conversation with the owner. Um, the hopes when doing this is that the child learns that even if it's something as small as stealing a cup or something that has little to no value to someone, they can still cause a ripple effect in the long run. There's a quote that I found about reintegrative shaming in Japan, and it says that the widespread use of apology and forgiveness and its culture of shaming and community involvement in dispute resolution have been widely cited as evidence of reintegrative shaming in practice. And that just means that apology and forgiveness go a long way when it comes to teaching someone right and wrong. I hope this cleared up any questions that you had on this topic, but if you still have questions, feel free to put them in the discussion below, and I will try and answer them. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed.